What's up everybody, James here again from Totally Exposed. And in this video, I'm gonna be showing you how I organize um, my footage into libraries, events, and projects within Final Cut Pro 10. Let's do this. So first of all, if you're brand new to Totally Exposed and you've not seen any of our videos before, thank you very much for checking out this one. We are a channel dedicated to photography and videography, mainly focusing on kind of tips and tutorials and lots of gear and reviews. So if that sounds something you're into, please consider subscribing to the channel so you don't miss out on any future uploads. But let's get into this then, shall we? Final Cut Pro. So I started editing in Premiere Pro and I've recently moved over to uh, Final Cut Pro 10 on the Mac. One of the things that caught me out kind of from the get-go was some of the terminology and how you actually structure your projects and where you put things and whatnot. So I'm gonna run through how I uh, structure my footage and import it into the computer. This isn't a hard and fast rule, it's not correct necessarily, there's no right or wrong answers for this, but it's how I do it, I thought I'd share it with you guys. If you're new to the program, then it may be of use. So first off, on the computer here, um, I tend to edit everything off of a little external SSD drive um, and I will make a new folder for every new project that I'm about to start. In fact, let's not use the word project because project is one of the terms of a, a level of something in Final Cut Pro 10. Let's call the, from now on a deliverable. So a deliverable could be like a single YouTube video or a client project or a music video or something. We'll refer to that from now on as a deliverable. So the way that we do it, for each deliverable, I like to make its own folder. So I'll make a new folder here and I'll call this. Um... So we've got some footage on here from when we were building a table in Neil's garage. So let's import that, shall we? We'll use that as our demo. So we've got this new project now, building the set project. And personally, I tend to like to drag this down here so that I can quick reference this whilst I'm working on the project now. Sorry, I've broken my own rules already. Deliverable, the deliverable. So within each deliverable folder, I like to have a few other subfolders. Now subfolders are the key to me to structuring the projects, deliverable, ah, structuring it and getting everything organized. You wanna to be totally organized from the get go. If you wanna start reorganizing things later, you could end up in a right mess. So I tend to create a folder first called assets and I'll make another folder called delivery. So delivery is the final renders and that's probably going to be like a ProRes master and then a deliverable like a H.264 file for put on YouTube for example. Within assets I then like to make a few other folders. Audio which will have some subfolders as well. Video. Images tends to be where I end up. And within audio, I tend to then have some subfolders in here. So I tend to have um, voiceover. So that's from like a Zoom recorder or lav mics or anything like that. Uh, we'll have music. We'll have some effects. And then within video, depending on the uh, the deliverable that we're working on here, um, this could be split by days. So day one, day two, depending on the kind of shoot that you were doing. It could be split then by cameras and all sorts of stuff. I prefer to just keep it sort of A roll, B roll. We can see where we're going from there. I can branch things off if I need to further on. So I like to have a folder for all the A roll. folder for all the b-roll so I've got the kind of project structure set up now the folder structure uh, let's go and get some of the files that we had um, so these are some clips uh, when we were building this table um, and I've already kind of loosely said these are b-rolls these couple are a-rolls and then I've got um, a, a, an audio file that I'd like to include as well so for now, I'm gonna copy these files. I know that they're B-roll files. And I'm gonna copy these over here. These two I know are A-roll files. Put those in there. And then this is some music that I'd like to use. 
So that'll go in it. audio, music. Now the reason that the folder structure is quite important is because as you'll see when we get into Final Cut Pro, this folder structure will allow you to create sort of keywords or filterable subsections within events. Now that might not make any sense yet, but let's find, let's have a look at that now. So I think now I've got a folder structure set up, it's a good time to create the library. Um, so let's talk about libraries. Now libraries can be used as a collection of lots of sub sort of sub deliverables we'll refer to it that so you could have a library called all my YouTube videos and then um, all of them kind of in there personally I don't like that approach you can kind of get unstuck very fast your computer will slow right down it makes it a bit of a mess I prefer to have one library per deliverable. So each one of these uh, folders has a library within it. So let's launch Final Cut Pro and we'll start importing some of this footage in. Okay, so we've opened up Final Cut Pro. It's totally empty. We'll go File, New, Library. And we'll navigate to our building set project and we'll call it Building Set. So if you are familiar with Premiere Pro, the way that I see a library is this is the same as a project file. So the project file that you had for Premiere Pro, the whole thing, this is a library within Final Cut. That's the analogy that I use. So you'll see now in here, um, we're given our first event. So an event, they date it. Uh, events kind of, they're like, again, if you're familiar with Premiere Pro, to me, they're like bins, but you can't nest them. They're sort of top level. Um, and I tend to use them in the same way as I use these folders here, audio, images, and video. Um, I've seen other people say you should just dump everything in your event and use all of the further keyword filtering and stuff. I prefer to have an event for each one of these three, so audio, images and video, and then the keyword generation will happen in here when we have these subfolders and stuff. So um, let's, as soon as we've already got an event, let's make that event for video and we'll make a couple more events. We'll make one for uh, the images, and we'll make one for audio. So let's import some video into this video event. You can see there's the import media uh, prompt here because we haven't got anything yet. You can also launch this by holding command and pressing I. So we're in here, we're inside our assets folder and here's our video A roll and B roll. Um, I'm gonna click on A roll I'm gonna import the whole folder with all of the files inside of it. And on the right hand side, you'll see that there's some additional options that are worth considering. Um, firstly, it's just confirming which event it is that you'd like to add these files to. Video sounds good to me. Files, do you want to copy them or do you want to leave them in place? Now copying them will actually get those files. And if we have a look inside the package contents of this Final Cut Pro projects, library, whatever you wanna call it, um, it will copy them into here and manage them for you within this. I tend to not like that approach. I prefer to manage where my media is myself. So um, I always keep that as leave the files in place. Uh, in this prompt here, it's asking you what you want to do with keywords. And these are quite handy. This is where the folder structures come into place. So I tend to leave both of those ticked. Now transcoding, creating optimized media and creating proxy media. Uh, create optimized media will transcode the files and generate uh, sort of 422 ProRes files. It's a bit easier for Final Cut Pro to work with. Potentially, it will even need to more space depending on what it was that you shot the footage in in the first place. I tend to leave that alone. Um, Proxy media, sometimes more helpful, especially if we're shooting with the Canon C200 and we're editing raw video and things like that. Um, but again, I don't do it at ingress. I decide later on if things are getting a bit sluggish and I'm, I think I could do with some proxy files, I'll render those out later on. So both of those I tend to leave, leave unchecked. And all of this stuff here about uh, balancing white balance and finding people, I leave all of that turned off um, and it's ready to import. So I'm gonna import these files and 
nothing's moved, so everything is as is, but now there's a reference within Final Cut Pro to these two A-Roll files. And you can see that they're here and they're scrubbable through the timelines. Um, but you'll also see this little keyword here, which is A-Roll, which is obviously the folder that we created. This is why it's really important, before you even start importing footage into Final Cut Pro, Get your media organized within Finder, get them all in the right folders, it will make your life so much easier when you get into editing. So let's continue on, I'm going to press Ctrl and I and I'll do the same with B-Roll, I'll leave everything else as it is and I'll import all of that. So now if I click on uh, video I can see all video, but you'll see now I can filter this down between A-Roll and B-Roll, which is pretty handy. Uh, so if I carry on and I just import the audio that I had, um, this was this song that I liked. Uh, I'll just import the whole music folder. Okay, so there's the music. So we can see we're starting to get there. We're sort of getting that. We've got our library, which is for the whole deliverable, this building of the set video. Uh, we have some events that I tend to use like bins. Um, we have keywords, which are actually driven from the finder folders. They're more like kind of sub bins or like, yeah, folders in folders. And the, the missing piece of the puzzle is like the timeline, which is actually referred to as a project in here. So all the words are sort of back to front, the terminology is all over the show. So a project is like um, a sequence was within Premiere. Um, and I tend to generate a sequence from a file. If I know that this is uh, sort of a starting point, I'll use this. Um, and it will ask me, what do you want your project to be called? In fact, this is a good time to make another event if you wanted to just for the projects. Because you may have sequences or you may have nested clips and things like that. Um, so within here, I'm going to select this. I'm going to say new project, please. I'd like to make it within the project event. And I'll call this main. Um, this is the opportunity. It kind of takes the settings of the clip that you use to generate the project from. Um, so 25 frames a second sounds good to me. Uh, sort of UHD, that sounds good to me as well. Um, you can use what you what you want to render the files out in the background. I leave that as ProRes 42. That also sounds good to me. Go. And so now that's made in, in projects here. We've got our main project, which is like a sequence. And here now you can see here's the sequence down here. And you can start dragging in your footage and you can start editing away and off you go. So that's kind of it really. That's how we st structure our footage, how we import it into Final Cut Pro and how we get going within the editor. Um, if that was helpful for you, then give the video a little like down below. Consider subscribing for more Final Cut Pro or videography or photography related videos. And I'll catch you soon in the next one.